Our top focus this hour, within days, the Ukraine crisis has taken a huge detour from diplomacy to force. Russian lawmakers authorized Putin to use military force outside the country. This move could be a harbinger of a broader attack on Ukraine, while the United States says an invasion is already underway. Russian lawmakers have given Vladimir Putin the green light to deploy forces abroad. Now the Russian leader can send troops into Ukraine despite a fierce global backlash. The unanimous approval by Russia's upper house allows deployments of what they call peacekeepers to two breakaway Ukrainian regions. The regions are now recognized by Moscow as independent. Russia has also established diplomatic relations with Ukraine's separatist-controlled regions after Putin ordered Russian troops into eastern Ukraine. Later satellite imagery shows new deployments of Russian troops near the border of northeastern Ukraine. Soldiers and equipments have been established in areas less than 20 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. More than 100 military vehicles, dozens of troops, tents can be seen in southern Belarus near the Ukraine border. The new military activity comes after Putin called for demilitarization of Ukraine. Russia has in fact issued a series of provocative statements since recognizing the rebel regions. Putin has said that the crisis on the Ukrainian-Russian border could be resolved if Kiev recognized Russia's sovereignty over Crimea. He has called for international recognition of Crimea as part of Russia. The Black Sea Peninsula was annexed by Moscow from Ukraine in 2014. Putin said that the best solution to the crisis would be for Kiev to drop its NATO membership ambitions and to stay neutral. He also blamed Kiev instead of Moscow for killing the Minsk peace agreements on Ukraine, adding that there was nothing left to fulfill. The Western brokered peace agreement sought to end the eastern Ukraine conflict. Были убиты еще задолго до вчерашнего признания народных республик Донбасса. И не, не нами, не представителями этих республик, а действующими ки киевскими властями. Решением этого вопроса было бы, ну, чтобы наши коллеги в западных странах не теряли, что называется, лица, чтобы сегодняшние киевские власти отказались от сами отказались от вступления в НАТО, по сути, по сути реализовали бы идею нейтралитета. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also took aim at Ukraine's sovereignty. He suggested that Kiev was less deserving of its status than the Russia-backed separatist republics. Lavrov also claimed that Ukraine did not have a representative government ever since the state coup in 2014. And for more on this, joining us live is Ambassador Esti Devere, former Indian ambassador to Ukraine. So thank you so much for joining us. The Ukraine-Russia crisis has deepened. The United States and its allies have announced the first tranche of sanctions. Also, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline has been halted. How do you see these sanctions impacting the situation? Well, the situation is indeed quite grim and volatile. Uh, sanctions have already been now placed by the U.S. and Western allies. Um, Germany has already announced that they will uh, not certify and will not operate the North uh, Stream uh, pipeline, gas pipeline, which will be, of course, a major loss both for Russia as well as for Germany. France has uh, um, announced similar sanctions, so also UK. So sanctions, uh, well, they will have a severe effect on Russia. It might also affect um, supply chains around the world. And um, already the markets around the world are now, uh, many of them have crashed. Uh, oil prices have now gone up, uh, crossing $100 uh, per barrel. Mm. So this will have very uh, serious effects on a number of countries, not just uh, right. Europe, but uh, beyond, including India. Right, right. So uh, we have talked about uh, all along, even day before yesterday at the UN emergency session after Russia announced this uh, significant step uh, in the shift of their policy uh, towards um, this uh, Donbass area, right. that de-escalation is actually the immediate priority. Right. And uh, if the escalation on the border between Russia and Ukraine continues as it has been, then it has the potential to seriously undermine peace and security in the region. Right. I think this is really very valid what we have said. And therefore, and yesterday, uh, Foreign Minister Dr. Jai Shankar 
uh, attending the uh, EU conference on uh, Indo-Pacific in Paris, uh, also said that most countries are interested in a diplomatic solution. Right. India is a member of the Security Council, uh, is in a position to talk to these countries now. India, in fact, is engaged in discussion with many countries. And therefore, our uh, point that most countries want diplomatic solution, that needs to be pursued because, you know, otherwise the result could be really very uh, deleterious and harmful to, uh, to the whole world. Absolutely. Right, Ambassador. In fact, I was just going to come to that. How do you assess the role of India? We know, as you mentioned just right now, that India has taken a neutral stance and has pus pushed for a diplomatic solution. Do you think, what do you think would be the implications of the deepening tensions on India, if any? The tensions could be manifold, you know, tensions, immediate economic tension, for example, uh, uh, impact yesterday uh, at the financial Stability Development Council chaired by our finance minister. Uh, it was a uh, voice that uh, the uh, Ukrainian situation and the crude prices supply uh, can have uh, impact on the financial stability. So this is uh, one thing. Uh, another uh, is the whole global uh, you know, balance of power, of our power situation is changing. Hmm. And uh, this kind of, um, I think, uh, change in um, whole security situation is not really conducive to peace. Right. Uh, we also feel that uh, the attention which has been paid to the problems of Indo-Pacific, uh, which a number of countries today are taking keen interest in, including uh, U.S., the core countries, as well as uh, some of the countries in Europe, they get distracted. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether enough energies will be devoted to the, uh, you know, issues in the Indo-Pacific, there is another impact uh, following the developments in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there are several uh, um, issues which can be, and uh, as I said earlier, I think global supply chains, are in the danger of getting disrupted and that can have uh, across the board impact, right. both economic, uh, technological, political and so on. Right. And what options do you think this leaves Ukraine with? How do you see the situation unfolding going forward? Well, uh, Ukraine president, I think yesterday, day before, uh, he had asked Western countries to start Im sanctions immediately. Uh, it seems that the Western countries have already started. Uh, Ukrainians are uh, saying that they will stand firm and um, yet will not really resort to immediate uh, violence. They will uh, resist uh, the Russian uh, actions. Um, but just now, as I, I was hearing, there will not be mobilization. Mm -hmm. So I think Ukraine... Uh, uh, also, I think is, is supportive of diplomatic solution because obviously that is in their interest and uh, they will work very closely with their uh, Western friends. Right. All right, Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us with your analysis of the situation. Thank you. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.